Mrs. Guttenberg, have you prepared a statement for the court today? Yes, I did. Are you able to read it, please? Speaking about my daughter in the past tense is such a painful thing to do. And to sit here in front of this court and do just that is so difficult that there are no words to describe it. To the rest of the world, Jamie is known as the graceful and beautiful 14-year-old dancer with leaps a mile high. I wish that everyone knew that she was so much more. Aside from being a beautiful and competitive dancer, Jamie was an incredible human being. She was full of life, the life of the party, many would say, and she also had a quiet, insightful side too. She loved her family and friends intensely. She supported the humane treatment of dogs and spent her time at the Humane Society of Broward County. She was tiny but fierce and stood up against bullies and the underdog and was an advocate for those with special needs and disabilities. After a long week of school, Jamie volunteered on Friday afternoons to be a buddy in a dance class for students with special needs and also on Saturdays for a fitness class for teens and young adults with special needs. She was a competitive dancer and spent many afternoons, evenings, and weekends dancing. She loved her busy schedule, but also truly cherished her downtime by snuggling with her dogs on the couch, curled up in front of her favorite TV shows, or hanging out with her family and friends. Jamie completed our family of four, mom, dad, son, and daughter. She made us parents of two and made my son Jesse a big brother. From the moment Jesse laid eyes on her, he became nurturing and protective. Jamie grew into her own person very quickly and became such a vibrant part of our family. She was always determined, strong-minded, and passionate. She was smart and focused, an incredible student, and beautiful both inside and out. She was wise beyond her years and had a life plan. She wanted to attend the University of Florida to study and become a physical therapist for children with special needs, most specifically kids with limb differences. She wanted to help a child walk for the first time. She even knew where she wanted to work. She dreamed of getting married and having children of her own and spoke of that even at her young age. She knew how to live in the moment, but also plan for the future. February 14th. 2018 began as a typical day. Jamie happily left to go to school. Her brother Jesse drove her there, as he always did. She texted me at lunchtime because she was concerned about a friend, so she was asking for my advice, typical of Jamie worrying about others. This was the last time I ever communicated with my beautiful, precious 14-year-old daughter. No actual words, just some texts about a friend in need. She never got to say goodbye. I never got to say goodbye. Her dad never got to say goodbye. Her brother never got to say goodbye. Nobody got to say goodbye. Our son Jesse was 17, a junior at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School when Jamie's life was taken. At the end of every school day, he would meet Jamie, just a freshman near her last class, and they would walk together to his car so he could drive her home. This particular day, it would have been at the 1200 building, but he didn't get the chance. After the tragedy, Jesse eventually made the painful decision to go back to the school where it all happened. Every day during his senior year, he parked his car and walked past the 1200 building. His first period class that year was right across from the building. He struggles immensely with survivor's guilt, why he made it out that day and Jamie didn't. He beats himself up inside for not being able to save her, even though it wasn't possible. He fears losing his family and he is not the same upbeat and happy person and feels he'll never be the same. Jesse and Jamie bickered like siblings, but were also best friends. She took care of him as much as he took care of her. He lost his number one. It's impossible to, to describe life without Jamie in this short amount of time that I've been given here, but I will try my best. 
Every day I live with the fact that Jamie's life was cut too short and that she was unable to show the world her fullest potential. She missed out on a lifetime of things, high school experiences, dance classes with her friends, high school graduation, moving away to college and college graduation, her first job, getting married and having kids of her own. The list goes on and on. The pain of this is unbearable. My life feels so empty, lonely, and incomplete. There are days that the sadness is so overwhelming and the crying comes from deep within the gut and causes physical pain. I can't sleep well. My career has suffered as working with other people's children, especially at their school, is now so emotionally taxing. My outlook on life has completely changed in such a negative way. It takes strength just to get through each day. One day at a time, we say, even this many years later. I lost my daughter, my flesh and blood, the baby that grew inside of me, and then in an instant, she was gone. I lost my purpose in life that day. My job as a mom to Jamie was taken from me. I went from taking her to dance, going on lunch dates, shopping together, making sure she was fed, healthy, safe, and so much more to doing nothing. All of our relationships in the house changed that very day and we still work hard to repair the damage that this has caused. We will continue moving forward together in a life that is so drastically different and one filled with sadness and trauma. Every day things are difficult. Seeing her friends and classmates achieve milestones that she will never have the chance to achieve is excruciatingly difficult. Family get-togethers and holidays will always include a missing seat at the table, and the life of the party is no longer there, keeping everyone upbeat and laughing. There is togetherness, but there's no celebrating. There's a deafening silence amongst everyone, as they don't want to bring up Jamie's name to cause pain, but don't want to forget her either. Her elderly grandparents are there to partake, carrying the guilt, knowing that in a typical life, they should be gone long before her. Jamie's cousins struggle with losing her every day. One of her cousins, the same age as Jamie, was one of her best friends is, and is now at college without her after years of planning that they would be going together. Her younger cousin struggled with coming to our home and stopped doing things with us because it was too painful without her. Our relationships with everyone has changed, including family, friends, and even strangers. Nobody knows the right words to say. Nobody knows how to act around us. No matter how close or far away they are, they live with the pain too, as our pain is their pain. I struggle immensely with not allowing myself to partake in anything that Jamie liked. Her favorite snack, I cannot let touch my lips because it isn't fair that I can eat it, but she no longer can. I can't watch Gator football games, my own alma mater, because Jamie should be at her dream school watching those games herself. If one of her favorite TV shows comes on, I change the channel. Why should I watch if she can't? The list goes on and on. I miss Jamie. I miss her sparkle. I miss her larger than life personality. I miss her dancing. I miss her snuggles. I miss her hugs. I miss her kisses. I miss our chats. I miss everything about her from her head to her toes. I miss her heart, and I miss her soul. I miss my girl. <sighs> Valentine's Day, a day of love, used to be my favorite holiday, and now it will always represent the worst, the absolute worst day of my life. Our lives have been changed forever and will never return to what most consider normal. We have created a foundation in Jamie's name to keep her memory alive. We use it to do good things in the world, supporting things that were important to Jamie in life, as well as to why her life was taken from her. I will always have to speak of my daughter now in the past tense because she's no longer here with me on earth. As a parent, there can be no greater pain. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Dutton.